my family of mental health advocates or mental health friends and family. <laughs> um, I'm Moonshine's Curiosity and today I'm going to talk about showering with mental health problems. Now showering is very difficult when you have when you're mentally ill, um, be it schizoaffective, schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, um, anxiety, mental illnesses of like that, it's very hard to shower. Even, even other diagnoses like autism, um, I'm not going to go into it all because I can't think of any right now, but you know what I mean, mental illnesses. So here I got, I did some research. And, um, basically I looked into it because I know I have a hard time showering. I shower about once a week and that's terrible because in the summertime it's like 120 degrees sometimes because I live in the desert, uh, Fahrenheit. So here are a few things that I've experienced with it and a few things that I looked up online. I'll have the links in the description, so if you want to look into it with the, the, the with the blogs or with um, the Mighty, the Mighty is a great website, by the way. It's about mental health, and they can help you out with that. Um, they have a lot of good tips, tricks, and it's just a good page to go to. It definitely understands um, this, you know. Uh, disabilities and mental illness. Um, also, NAMI, N-A-M-I. NAMI is a great website if you don't know what a mental illness is. Let's say you don't know what schizoaffective is. You don't know what uh, DID is, um, which is a uh, multiple personality, um, or that's what it used to be called. At this point, I forgot what DID stood for. It's at the bottom of the screen. DID. Um, so anyways, let's jump into this. So showering is a hard thing to do when you're mentally ill. I know for me it's really hard. Um, some thoughts, like, um, I never thought of it this way, but some people have a hard time in the shower because you're alone with your thoughts. And for me it's like that, but I never thought of it that way. Like, you know, you're alone with your thoughts. Sometimes it's really scary. You could be depressed. You could be manic, you know, you're overthinking because you're manic and you just want to do everything and you would just have so much on your mind, it's scary. And it's better just to distract yourself and showering, you're alone with your thoughts. Depression on there, if you were in the shower with depression, you may think of horrible things or suicide tendencies or just giving up on life. So that's one point, or you may just realize you know what am I doing with my life which shouldn't matter you know you're important no matter what even if you're not doing anything right now even if you're stuck in bed because you're scared or upset or feeling suicidal just know you're not alone and us with mental illnesses we all here I messed up some of my wording so just read the text on the screen thank you well, well we don't all have it but you know what I mean we, we can have those tendencies. So you're not alone. There's plenty of us out there. Um, I know personally a hard thing for me to do when I shower is the hallucinations. It's like I'm in there. I'm vulnerable. You know, you're naked in there. You're, you're distracted by the water hitting you. You might not be able to see because it's um, getting, in, you know, the water's getting in your eyes. And you start hallucinating sounds or shadows going by the the curtain you know it's it's really scary and I know for me that's happened multiple times I'll hear talking in the room I'll start answering and then realize wait a second I'll look in the room no one's there oh <laughs> um, other times I've seen something walk by the shower curtain which is very unsettling because when you look out no one's there so hallucinations can be a cause of not wanting to shower um, uh, another piece that I read, uh, the Mighty mentioned that some people feel bad body image. So they may say, um, they may look at their bodies because there's not much to do in the shower and you'll see that you've gained weight from medication 
or just because you can't get up and do anything from having a long de depression spell. You know, body image can really affect you. I know for me, I've gained about 30 pounds. Yeah, about 30, 40 pounds from medication. And sometimes it's hard for me. I never thought about it, but yeah, it is hard for me sometimes to look at myself and go, oh man, where did all this weight come from? Granted, I don't eat the best, but sometimes it's really hard to eat well when you're depressed. You know, sometimes you forget to eat and you lose a little weight, which is unhealthy because you didn't eat. And then when you're back to normal or manic, you start eating everything and, and then your body kind of over engorges. Or the medication may slow down your metabolism and cause you to get bigger. So, body image. Big thing. Um... Um, you can have depression, which I kind of stepped, or you know, I, I started to talk about. Depression, you know, what's the point of showering? There's no need to shower. It's not like anyone cares. That's those are the feelings and thoughts that you have sometimes when you're depressed. Is, you know, what's the point? Why does it matter to take a shower? Well, it's very important. If you start taking care of yourself, you may feel a little better of yourself. But I know how hard it is to even get out of bed when you're depressed. Especially when it's bipolar depression. I've heard that sometimes it's harder with that Because bipolar can really hit low the low end of low of depression I know for me and I have schizoaffective It gets really hard my hallucinations change a little bit when I'm depressed. They're very dark and scary but anyways onward to the next point um, Some people and I, I read this on a blog and it says showering is below me when you're manic. Sometimes when you're manic you want to do everything except for the little things like brushing your teeth, taking a shower. What's the point of doing that? You have so much to do with your life. And when you're manic you have so many thoughts at once. It's so scary. You know, one minute you want to draw and paint. The next minute you want to watch TV. The next minute you want to go and party. Another minute you want to just do crazy stuff, you know, like do drugs or spend all your money or have sex with random people and you can't really control it you just want to do all of it you want to do everything at the same time that's how it feels for me is everything you just want to do it all so showering may feel below you because that's not fun that's not exciting why would I do that it takes my time out of the day I can't do all the stuff I want to do also if you're manic Try to hide your credit cards, give them to somebody who you trust, like a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a parent or maybe even a sibling that will take care of them and just give it to them so you don't spend all your money. Because when I, when I got manic one time, I spent five grand on random stuff in a month. And guess what? I'm still paying those credit cards and that was three years ago. So just... That's just a tip about mania. Hide your credit cards. Even just put them in a drawer and don't think about them. You know? And then later on, when you're normal or depressed or whatever, you can put it back in your wallet and, and go along with your day. So, there are a few tips that you can do to, for showering. If you're really scared, um... Um, if you're really scared to shower because of the hallucinations or because you're alone with your thoughts You can always like sit on the floor of the shower and just meditate Meditate that you're with each drop that's hitting your body. It's, it's Cleaning the 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 grunge from depression each drop is cleaning you of the pain that you feel of the gunk, the tar that you feel in your body because you're so down in the dumps. You can't do anything. You may be suicidal. Just think of it as cleaning you, cleaning your soul, cleaning your mind, cleaning it all so you feel better about yourself. So that's one point. Another one is, and I read this and I went, huh, interesting. Sometimes when you shower, you're overstimulated. Now, what I thought was interesting is in one of the blogs I read, Someone said that their friend mentioned that the shower head was too strong. So, you know, maybe the shower is spraying you so hard that it's overstimulating you. 
So you may want to get like a softer shower head or one that you can change the, 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 the water flow on so it doesn't hit you as hard. So I thought that was interesting that, you know, maybe you get overstimulated from it. Never thought that you could get overstimulated in the shower, but you could. And I've never thought of it that way. So that was really cool. But here I'm going to end off uh, with this video. Hopefully it's helped you a little bit to understand why some of us don't shower or it's very hard to shower. Sometimes we'll go weeks without showering or brushing our teeth or combing our hair. It's, but it's the little stuff that's important. Just realize once you, once you start showering and brushing your teeth and combing your hair as hard as it can be when you're depressed, just know that doing those little things can cheer you up just a little bit, help you about your body image. You know, um, you feel a little more productive when you take care of yourself. So always remember that. Also, just remember when you're doing bad, manic, depression, hallucinating, delusions, whatever you're having, just realize you are not alone. Someone's always, you know, someone's always going through the same thing. Someone in the world is. And you're just not alone, so don't be scared. Just think of that, and hopefully that helps you feel better, you know. I know for me, feeling alone is one of the worst things to feel. And when you realize, you know, I'm not alone in the world, there are other people that can help us, um, it always makes me feel better. Because there are professionals that want to help. There are friends and family and people who do want to help. Some of them may not understand what you're going through. Bipolar is a hard one to understand for people who don't have it. Uh, schizophrenia is hard to deal with if people don't have it. And the, the worst part of having schizophrenia, I think, is people think you're crazy or a serial killer or a horrible person. Let's face it, schizophrenia, a lot of people have it. Even in the United States, a lot of people have it. And guess what? We're not killers. We're not going out plotting to hurt people normally. Most of us just want to get better and act normal in society. I say normal, but we want to be one with society. We want to be productive. We want to be better. We want to be stronger, you know, emotionally and mentally. So that's all I have to say today. Just remember you are not alone. And I hope you have a great day and try to smile even if it's hard. I've heard if you smile and you make yourself smile, sometimes you'll feel better. So try to smile. If it's too much work, don't worry about it. Just try to feel better and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.